This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 482 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by Eco Gold. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Bobby Costello, who grew up fox hunting and showing in South Hamilton, Massachusetts, the original location of the United States Equestrian Team headquarters. After graduating from college, he ventured into the horse business full-time and earned the honor of representing the United States in the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games and again in the 2003 Pan American Games. Bobby's tip today is about the pitfalls of changing bits. But first, a word about today's sponsor, Eco Gold. Eco Gold's engineering team works with world champion competitors from many disciplines to create top quality, problem-solving products for the world's greatest athletes, our horses. Friction-reducing saddle pads, impact-resistant non-neoprene dressage and cross-country boots, and superior moisture-wicking coolers are just a few examples of the innovative, stylish, and easy-to-care-for products that Eco Gold has developed to help our horses feel and perform their best. Ask for Eco Gold products by name at your local tax store or visit them at ecogold.ca. Now, enjoy today's tip. Teaching all these clinics to see the, the array of bits that end up <laughs> showing up. And, um, and you know, people, you know, you, I always kind of check out uh, who's using what and kind of quiz them on, on why they're using this type of bit as opposed to that type of bit. And, um, and I, I don't know, I just find that people don't really oftentimes have a, have a really great reason why they're using, you know, uh, whatever kind of bid it is. So, you know, I spend a lot of time at the beginning talking to people about that and, um, you know, asking them about their horse and, um, and, and, and trying to help them pick out maybe a bit that might be a little bit more, um, suitable. Um, I, I, you know, uh, these, um, there's one type of bit, um, that I find, that a lot of people come in that, um, that are very popular. They're those uh, three ring bits um, that that I just find um, that they're the ones that the, the rein can be either put on the bridle as though it, for it to act just like a regular snaffle, but then you can also put the rein lower down on these rings. And um, I found that that horses, you know, almost almost 80 percent, 90 percent of the horses that that come in those bits. If if the rider really doesn't have good hands, they that bit just doesn't work for a lot of adult amateurs. Um, horses are very sensitive. It looks like quite a mild bit, but um, there's quite a lot of leverage that you can use with those with those particular bits. So I've steered I, I know a lot of my students away from those to something a little bit more uh, a little bit different, but um, similar um, in those. Uh, wonder bits, I think they're called. They're, they're, um, you see, I, I ride a bunch of my horses in them. I think Philip, uh, Dutton, I see a lot of his horses in those. And it's the, it's basically a snaffle and there's a ring within a ring that the, um, that the cheek piece is attached to and, and the, and the rein does as well. And you do get a little bit of leverage, but it's a little bit more diffused and, um, it's a very soft, um, mouthpiece. And so I, I love that type of bit. Um, I had a story this weekend where um, uh, the girl came for the show jumping um, part of it the first day, and she was just in a, in a regular uh, full cheek snaffle. And the horse was um, a little strong, and I actually got on it and just to, to kind of uh, feel it out a little bit. And so, you know, I said to her, I said, well, do you perhaps have a, just a slow, twisted snaffle, maybe just something that, that might get his attention just a little bit more without – you know, really bumping up to anything too strong. And she said, oh, yes, yes. So she came to the cross-country part the next day with, like, a double-twisted wire snaffle. I was like, no, that's not, oh. that's not a slow-twisted snaffle. So we had to find something else. But um, but but bits are, you know, they're, they're a tricky thing, and, and that's where, you know, your local professional and, um, you know, really getting the, the, the expertise from someone to help pick out an appropriate bit is uh really important um and i like to you know start with less and then and obviously then work your way up but um but i also find from from the weekend that 
so many of the horses, you know, from the beginning to end, you know, people I think realized that if, you know, what is actually making their, their horses strong. Um, and a lot of times it really doesn't have anything to do with the bit. It's, um, you know, just learning to ride their horse a little bit more effectively. And they, they soon learn that maybe they don't even need a strong root bit as they thought they did. And there's also the consideration, of course, that if there's any evasion, there may be a reason other than the need for a change of bit that the horse is evading the hand and going above the bit or behind the bit or, you know, that, and I think that's another topic we should talk about, maybe that, you know, above and, above and behind the bit and, and the other possibilities, you know, such as an injury, such as pain somewhere, maybe in the back. It could not, it need not necessarily be in front of the saddle. It could be, it could be behind and it could be, of course, in the mouth too and the importance yeah. of regular dental care. Definitely. I, I remember, um, I'll always remember had a, having a conversation with Beth Perkins, who has, you know, obviously uh, been around the event scene for decades and she's still such a, such an excellent, excellent competitor and rider. And, um, you know, she was you know, once again saying how, you know, we, we relearn the same things over and over again that, you know, when we, when we're dealing with a resistance, when we're dealing with uh, a horse that's really going through a, a difficult patch that, um, you know, more times than not, it does have to do with something physical that the horse is feeling a, a little bit of pain somewhere and how important it is to be really in tune with our horses and, and, and not hesitate to investigate, you know, w- you know, the, really the root cause of any evasion or, or difficulty that, that you might be, um, experiencing. So, um, you know, that, that's definitely something to, to really, um, keep at the forefront of your, your mind, like how your horse is feeling physically and how that then may translate into any behavioral issues that you might be having. And so important, as you said, Bobby, to seek really good advice. You know, if you feel your horse is not going well in that bit, you know, before you go and change the bit, get some good advice from a professional as to why that horse might not be going well, or, or it may be just jumping or galloping, he's not going as well. Maybe on the flat he's fine, but maybe a reason behind it all. And really spend time to investigate the reason and get very good advice before you go shopping. Of course, we encourage you to shop at bitofbritain.com where there is a terrific selection of bits, but uh, you, you know, don't go there with a blank checkbook and think, well, you know, they're all, they all look like they might work, and uh, there's so many choices. Be sure that you get the right bit for your horse. And uh, going back to that three ring, uh, I saw a lot of those at uh, the Young Riders last week at the horse park, uh, Kentucky Horse Park here, Bobby, and that, that is a popular bit. Does it have a, an official name or do you just call it a three ring bit? I, I usually just refer to it as a, a three ring bit um, and, and I'm not sure whether it's made by any specific bit company. I, I, don't, I think they become quite popular. I, I think you, know, just, you can find them just about anywhere so um because they are so easily um you can put your hands on them pretty easily that uh they're very very popular and they do look quite mild but but i think those i'm not just trying to pick on that one bit but it's just an example how you know you have to be so careful about which bit you choose um because it really can have a you know you'll you'll think that you're trying to get more control but um but that's not always the case you can oftentimes make things a little bit worse so Yes, just spend a lot of time, you know, investigating, talking to your your coach, your trainer, and um, uh, just to try to work out the best bidding situation for your particular horse. And beware of trends, you know. Don't go with what's yeah, fashionable. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. And that's a little bit uh, that, although the the three ring bit has been around for quite a while, it definitely is a quite a trendy bit, you know. Um, you, you know, and that's like how the flash nose band came along I, back in the eighties. Uh, you know, a few riders at the, at the team, you know, when I was still up in Hamilton started using those flash nose bands. And before you kn- knew it, everybody had a flash nose band and, you know, they're, they're perfectly legitimate nose band, but that was a, a trend that really took off. And, you know, to this day, you know, everybody wears a flash nose band pretty much. That's very true. Well, good advice, Bobby. Thank you for that. And uh, again, just to reinforce, be careful about making any selection. Make sure you get professional help and and look to yourself first. You know, do you have good hands? Are you riding in a way that is sympathetic to the horse's mouth? Well, there you go. And thanks, Bobby and Chris Stafford of the Eventing Radio Show. 
If you'd like to hear more, this tip is an excerpt from episode 153 of the Eventing Radio Show, and you can find it on the show's website, www.eventingradio.com. You can also go to www.tanglewoodfarmeventing.com and find out what Bobby Costello is up to. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover. You can subscribe to all of the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 